A very good day to all of you and a special thanks to Sentil for organizing Optal 2020 under such challenging times. COVID-19, a pandemic which shook us all. It taught us that we cannot harbor amongst in us the very seeds of being the best, being the tallest, being the largest. And if we do so, we will be harboring a virus which can infect others and kill ourselves too. So we need to work towards a more broader goal and a newer civilization where everything could be more fair priced, need based and more oriented to our daily requirements than being sophisticated or be synthetic or artificial. So I chose the topic of achieving fair price practice and achieving excellence through it. Generally, when we start our practices, we have our role models. And it is often the glitter of established practitioners which impress us more. But we do not remember that the practitioners who evolved to this uh, glitter had to go through a lot of struggles and probably every one of us have been very lucky to get the right thing at the right time. So when we try to be in their shoes, we often make mistakes and try to copy the entire sophistication that he has evolved out of his hard times. So we style our practice around his sophistication. But look at this picture, even Dr. Devi Sethi, who has all the investigations done for this child who probably will undergo a valve transplant, sees her heart with a stethoscope. And because this is one equipment that this child probably knows and appreciates rather than all the sophisticated tests the child had undergone. So we have to simplify things. And often such a sophisticated practice which we build around us uh, being taken away by the glitter of established practitioners also contributes to a huge price rise of our services. And this shadow pricing is probably takes us nowhere. So it is very rightly said that cost is more important than quality because if it is not affordable at the first place, it doesn't exist. And often if we respect cost, quality is automatically achieved through the efficiency because more the model becomes an economy of scale, the more import, important will become the quality. So quality, of course, is the best way to reduce cost. That is the second phrase. Because unless we do our jobs efficiently, it's going to cost us more. So we have to have a quality focus, but not at the cost of putting our cost to an extent where it is not affordable. This is one thing we always need to understand. Often it is perceived that low cost is low quality, but this is not the statement. The statement is that if somebody has delivers low quality because he wants to hit, hit a particular uh, cost point, it is a common perception that low cost is low quality. But if we focus on quality, then quality systems, quality operations would always reduce cost. And this is where we should aim at. Simplification is the ultimate sophistication. So though we use the 
technology, we must see how well it fits into the cost and what is the outcome of that particular technology before we incorporate it in, in our practice. Now, we are in a wonderful demographic dividend. India has an 18 crore elderly population, the population that matters to us about the age of 55 years. And this is going to double in the next 15 years. So we have a huge prospect of doing uh, great things. This will further um, produce excellent results because uh, the elderly are going to live long, they're going to be more affluent, they are going to be more visually dependent in this urban civilization. They are going to be probably alone and they will probably be 50% in the city and 30% in the suburbs. So there's enough work for all of us. And affordability, if we see, today if we take the entire scenario of 65 lakh intraocular implants that have done annually every year, a 50% of them are in the PMMA or the Indian hydrophilic foreign lens category, uh, which uh, probably the surgical cost would be between 6,000 to 15,000 rupees. Again, we generally focus on this group, which is the foreign, foreign lens and the premium uh, uh, lenses, which is only about a 20 to 25 percent of the total IOLs being done. Most practices focus around this, and this is where we should target because this is where our private practices can become most efficient. So we need to keep it, this in mind, and we should understand that the 20 lakh and the 15 lakh category is the category which is going to grow further because these are, this is where India will grow in the coming years. If we take an example of our own hospital, we see that the maximum IOLs are in the range of 10,000 to 25,000. So this is the uh, comfortable, affordable range uh, of patients. So, you know, when we try to design our private practice, we frequently ask, what is that the patient wants so that we can make him most happy? Well, the patient probably wants everything. He wants the best technology, he wants the most uh, beautiful infrastructure, he wants the most experienced consultant at the most convenient timing. But is he willing to pay for it? Well, that is the question we need to ask, that what is the patient willing to pay for? And that is what we need to understand because as per uh, our understanding, we understand that a patient is very comfortable paying one day per capita for OPD expenses and one month per capita for IPD or a cataract surgery. And if we take this and put it in economies of scale, we should be doing a very good job. Now, obviously, when we say economies of scale, uh, the biggest lost revenues or the biggest challenges come if we do something prematurely. So if we are seeing less than 30 patients, we should just have our own clinic and take our patients to a diagnostic center and a surgery center for operation and any other treatment that we want to take forward because we don't have the critical number to start our own setup. If we do that, we end up uh, having problems where we have to raise our charges and become uh, on the wrong side of affordability. 
So about a 30 to 70 patients per day is the critical uh, number where we can start our OPD, uh, cataract OT. So this is important to understand that this is where we can start our OT. Now, as we go and increase to 150, as patients increase, this is the time when we can uh, slowly uh, affiliate into group practices and grow further. Because this three doctor model can actually take care of a, a tertiary eye, a, a secondary eye hospital with all other uh, facilities with a revenue of around five crores. Now from here, if we further grow, we can go up to 250 patients and uh, incorporate a VROT, or we can have a VROT in our uh, same premises uh, where a VR surgeon comes uh, maybe one a week or twice a week. Now, whether we should scale to a second hospital or grow on the same premises is an important decision. Because again, I mean, there is also diseconomies of scale, which starts beyond this. So one must be very careful as to how he should go about doing that. So these things are very important. Say when a doctor is from the 30 to 70 patients and have come is growing towards a hundred patients should he start other opds when should he group these are very important considerations when he has the hospital has crossed 150 whether he they should start a second hospital or should grow taller in the same premises are very critical and strategic decisions and of course it sounds good that if you have 400 to 500 patients attending a hospital, that can become the uh, tertiary care hospital with cornea, eye banking, refractive, and a nine doctor uh, output. So these uh, scales are very important. Now, another thing is, uh, do we really cross sub subsidize towards cost? Now, what we do in Disha is our cost of consultation is 100 to 200 rupees, varying in where we are. Now, the ticket size per consultation varies from 600 to 1000 rupees, depending on where we are. Because the patient not only pays the OPD, but also buys medicines, also buys spectacles, or goes for an investigation. But if we keep our OPD charges more, as we see in most practices, uh, then the patient probably would hesitate to go for the investigation, will probably have to come another day. Uh, so this uh, low OPD charge we consider is a subsidized invitation to comprehensive care, which in the scale becomes profitable and if uh, every doctor sees for 40 to 50 patients or a day or roughly 10,000 patients a year. Now, I'll give another uh, chart where we give you the critical number of patients to be seen for an uh, investigation if your investigations are reasonably priced. So every third patient probably has some investigation in Disha. Every second patient has takes medicine. Every 15th or 16th patient probably buys a spectacle. And every 10th patient probably undergoes an OCT. Now this is important. We do a OCT in one eye for 300 rupees and yet we are surplus generating. So are the other charges, we can have a look. And this will also help us to decide when and at which stage of our patients can we break even with a particular equipment 
and should we have it in our center. We also need to understand that the cost changes with the number of patients and we cannot afford sleeping costs if we really want to have fair priced practice. Now again, uh, we, uh, we are giving the IPD uh, uh, cases which can convert from the OPD. So a cataract of a patient, every 7% of the entire OPD will be the cataract numbers or we need to see 15 patients for one cataract surgery. The retina injections and uh, others are subsequently mentioned. So we have to plan it out accordingly. So it could be that a certain stage of practice, we can start medical retina or invite a vitroretinal person to come one day a week and scale from there on, which many practices do very effectively. Most practices which probably do certain amount of oculoplasty and glaucoma surgery together. But to do retinal surgery, I think we need to have an OPD of around 15 to 20,000 per year before we take a constellation or a vitroretinal machine, an endolaser, and invite a vitroretinal surgeon to do a retinal surgery there. This uh, saying um, is based on a compliance uh, and an intervention ratio of 40 to 85 percent, which depends upon the consultants. Now, <clears throat> this is the financial sheet where we say that there is a rule of 20. So the infrastructure is 20 percent, doctors are 20 percent, staff and overall electrical and other maintenance is 20%. Consumables and medicines are 20% and the surplus is 20%. Now, any doctor would say that, I mean, this is only 20% for me, but actually in a private practice, most of the infrastructure and equipment is taken care of and the surplus is usually merged with the doctor's practice. So if you take a revenue of 100, basically 60 goes to the doctor and the 40 is spent around staff and consumables. Essentially, if we need to go forward, this is an absolute, we have seen a lot of sweet practices where, you know, the doctor is in the clinic, he keeps all the money in his dryer and from the dryer, the hospital expenses, the consumables are paid. So also, all his family expenses are paid from the same drive. Well, uh, this is not the way to go about. Now, when I say that this rule of 20, it says that if we have invested 100, suppose if we have invested 1 crore, then we should have a turnover of 1 crore. The other way of looking into things is we can keep the infrastructure totally separate because infrastructure can actually be treated as an asset rather than an investment into the business. Of course, we can have a lot of asset-like models where we can hire the premises or maybe, you know, we can even talk to the promoter of the uh, infrastructure and uh, we can incorporate him into our and give him a percentage of the top line. So he becomes a partner of our practice, but he doesn't come into the equity of the practice. So the instruments we always buy on higher purchase where the comprehensive warranty is always taken care of. Because uh, often I hear this conflict of, you know, the CMCs and the AMCs, but if you spread the, uh, the higher purchase over five to seven years and include the entire comprehensive warranty and keep on the paying the company, you have the total engagement of the company and also the total commitment of the company because they get the AMC, CMC. And the more important thing from a business point or a financial point of view, uh, you are actually converting 
a balance sheet into a profit and loss account. So it helps you maintain your accounts properly or understand your accounts properly. And obviously we should not incur sleeping costs. So we should not take a big premises, but we should take an expandable premises. If we are building a hospital, we must see that there is land available or it can grow taller. So all these things have to be kept in mind. Of course, the staff and everything else, we should as much multitask so that we use our time very properly and make the system absolutely lean and so that there is no fat in the system and try novel approaches to access them. We should definitely in this whole course collaborate with subspecialities especially with diabetic clinics, with uh, um, neuro uh, uh, neurology centers. We can also, you know, um, uh, partner with bigger hospitals where we can refer the cornea and keratoplasty patients. We can ask one of their cornea specialists to come. So there are various kinds of collaborations which can occur and uh, we need to focus on them because we should not be doing something which becomes a huge cost for us and uh, so increase the price of our service. Eventually, we come to one thing that honesty is perhaps a word which comes from fair pricing. You know, when your prices are of your services are fair, it becomes almost imperative to the uh, patient that this is a very honest and transparent and fair organization. This immediate belief has uh, develops, helps a lot to develop faith and value. And if there is a surprising quality to this fair price, that adds a lot of value and there is a strong word of mouth uh, reference and the practices go leaps and bounds and you hit the economies of scale. Thank you very much for your hearing. Um, thank you again, Sentel, for organizing this wonderful workshop.